How well would you fare if you suddenly traveled back in time to ancient Rome? Did you know that there was a science fiction short story written and published in the 40s that was turned into a Star Trek original series episode? Grifters are going to grift. They want to make that quick buck. Or maybe a million bucks. Don't rent that house out in the country just because it's a fabulous deal for a fabulous mansion, because things can go wrong. Did you know authors were writing about AI before there was AI? And if you're a scammer going to a small town in Ireland thinking of making some quick money, think again. And of course, Harold Bloom is having his day in Dublin. This has been my reading week. Hello, welcome to my channel. Another Bibliophile Reads. This is my reading wrap up for the end of July 13th. And what have I been reading? I am going to start off with my Rocket Summer books. Rocket Summer is an event created by Michael K. Vaughn to celebrate reading classic science fiction. And this week was all about reading science fiction written and published in the 40s. The first book I am going to talk about is Less Darkness Falls by L. Sprague de Camp. This may be a little bit of a cheat. There was an earlier version of the story published in 1939, but the edition that I'm reading from was published in 1941. And this is the story of a man in Rome who, um, suddenly finds himself traveled back in time to the ancient period, the 500s. And um, he's only traveled back with what he carries in his pockets, which isn't a whole lot. So how is a man going to survive in ancient Rome? By his wits alone. He is fortunate that he's an educated man, and he knew a little bit of Latin, and he could get by. And so what the first thing he wants to do, well, he wants to get a loan to start a business to make um, brandy out of wine. And uh, of course, the money lenders are very skeptical until he says to that money lender, how about I teach you a better accounting system? And um, he may not be an accountant, but he does know Arabic numerals, which are much better than Roman numerals. I'm going to leave it at that, because this man wants to make sure that the Dark Ages do not fall upon Europe, and um, bad times are happening in ancient Rome. And I really enjoyed this. It's, it's a great little story of time travel and ingenuity, but in my opinion, it's rather quaint. It's just old-fashioned. Of course, it was conceived in the late 30s and published in the 40s. It's going to be a little old-fashioned, but even that is a little quaint for my tastes. Um, I know I mentioned this in the Boxer group, and Steve Donahue said the, the spirit of L. Sprague de Camp is rolling over in his grave when I call him quaint. Even though it's quaint, it's a really good read. I am also reading short stories for Rocket. Summer, and I read Arena by Frederick Brown, originally published in 1944. And this is a tale of the human species at war with the outsiders, a mysterious alien race. And they're about to have this big, epic battle. And suddenly, one of the, 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 the little starship captains, who's, I guess he's not a captain, he's just on his own little starship or fighter ship, finds himself on an alien planet. It's desert. There's some sort of weird force field around him, and he hears this voice in his head. 
from a, a different alien saying, you know, you humans and you outsiders really should not be fighting this way, and you're going to wind up destroying each other. So we have decided to set up a battle between one human and one outsider, and the winner of this battle is going to be the species that survives. We will destroy the losing species in its entirety. And this is just a really fun, entertaining story. It was also turned into a Star Trek episode. The, the, it, it's really rather different from the Star Trek episode, of course. Almost nothing is really the same except the general concept of a greater alien species putting up two alien species to combat each other. And um, let me just say that the, the aliens in this story, the outsiders, are nothing like the Star Trek aliens, the, what's it called, the Gorm? I may be mistaken there. But that Star Trek episode was one of my favorites. And this short story is really good on its own. You don't really need to pay attention to the Star Trek episode to enjoy it. On my Kindle, I read a novella, The Whale, by Lawrence Kelter. This is the third entry into the Grifter's Song series. These are a series of novellas so far written by three different authors. And it is a story of um, two grifters, a man and a woman. And in each story, they're out to make some money, illegally. And um, they always run into problems. And in this one, the, the man is um, impersonating a very wealthy businessman who's um, sort of been away from New York City for, for 10 years. And they think they have a way make a few million bucks. You know things are going to go wrong, because that just makes a good story. Now, can you read this novella apart from the beginning of the series? Maybe. I have read the first two, and I think that helped introduce the characters and a little bit of the backstory. But if you just want to pick up a story, 79 pages. You can read it in an hour or so, and it's enjoyable, it's entertaining, because, you know, grifters, trying to grift people, is always a whole hell of a lot of fun. So I can recommend picking up the Grifter Song series. It is on Kindle Unlimited if you subscribe to that. So I'm picking it up for nothing, except for my subscription. I finished reading Burnt Offerings by Robert Morasco, originally published in 1973. This is the first book I am reading for my 70s horror project. So there will be a live stream at the end of July where I and a few other guests will talk about this novel. Stay tuned for more details. This is a haunted house story. There is a man and his wife and their young child. They're living in a cramped New York apartment. The man is a teacher, so he has summers off, and they decide to rent a house out in the country. They get a fabulous deal on a huge mansion. The mansion is a little old, it has some problems, and there is the mother who is living in the house, and they're supposed to give the mother some food every day, but the owners are escaping for the summer themselves. And the deal is just so good, the man and his wife can't say no, even though the husband kind of wants to say no. And you know something? That house with the old lady that they're never supposed to see, bad things are going to start happening. Now, this is a horror story. It is the, the pre-Stephen King style of horror. Um, it's very slow. It's a lot more deliberate. And it's a lot more nuanced. Don't expect a lot of um, special happenings and super events. It's creepy and entertaining. And I hope people will read this and maybe join in on that live stream to um, enter into the discussion in the chat.
I finished reading The Singularity by Dino Buzzati, originally published in Italian in 1960 and translated into English in 2024. In this story, a professor of electronics is contacted by the government and offered a very cushy two-year post somewhere in the remote region, mountainous region of Italy to do uh, an experiment and a task for them. The government is really not up for up front with what he's supposed to do, but the money is good. So he and his wife go out to this little uh, Italian place. Um, and there they discover a machine. That's all I'm going to say, but this is a book that explores the nature of artificial intelligence, what it means to be alive. What does it mean to be a person? Everyone watching this is their own unique person. But what if that person were also a machine? Fascinating philosophical slash science fiction novel. I'm saying slash science fiction because, yes, it does deal with an artificial intelligence that was not around in 1960. It's not around today, at least I don't think so, but it's more about the, the philosophical exploration of what it means to have intelligence. I can highly recommend it. On audio, I have finished listening to The Hunter by Tana French, published in 2024. Tana French is one of my favorite living and publishing authors. I always buy her books when they come out. I started to read The Haunter on my Kindle a few months ago, but couldn't quite get into it. Tana French is always a slow burn, and The Hunter starts off burning even slower than usual. So I put it aside. And um, I went to my library and requested the library book, and I just finished it. Now, this is a follow-up to her last novel, The Searcher, which features an ex-Chicago detective living in a small town in Ireland. And he's um, sort of uh, taking a young Irish girl under her wing who has a kind of a rough family. And in this one, she's a little bit older from the last book. She's about 15 years old. She's very independent. Her father has been absent for a lot of her life, but he's coming back. He came back with an Englishman, and they are telling all the people in this village that there is gold in those Irish hills, and if you invest with us, we're going to dig out that gold and make everyone really rich. Now, Cal listens to this. He knows it's a scam. Even the villagers are kind of suspicious that it's a scam. But they work it just enough that they say, all you have to do is give a couple hundred pounds, or is it euros, and you're in. And of course, once they put in those couple hundred pounds, they're going to be in even further. And there is the scam. And let's just say in this book, that the scam doesn't quite go according to plan. And um, they have to call in, let's just say, a detective from the homicide squad out of Dublin. So it does pick up towards the end. But more than a mystery, this is Tana French. She, she's actually a serious author, and she just writes her stories in the, the mystery genre. So they're not quite the same as an ordinary mystery novel, although you will get that mystery and a satisfactory one at that. And you get to see the development of Cal and the young girl Trey and Lena, which is uh, Cal's um, sort of girlfriend, and how they deal with these issues in this small Irish village. I really liked it. Now, if you are familiar with Tana French, you know that in one book, she likes to have a minor character. And then in her second book, she brings that minor character up forward to be a major character. 
there is a detective, as I said, brought in from Dublin in this book. And if I am not mistaken, that character is going to be featured in her next book, which will be published in about two years. Let's see if anyone remembers my prediction and see if I'm right. Highly recommended, The Hunter. Of course, I'm still reading Ulysses by James Joyce. I have finished episode 16, which is uh, coming down a lot of ways from the, the previous episode 15. And this one is kind of rambling, kind of labored, kind of confusing. It's like all that tiredness out of chapter 15 is, is come down upon the page. And Stephen Dedalus and Leopold Bloom just sort of um, have to uh, talk it out. Okay, that is a wrap for my reading week, ending July 13th. Thank you for watching, and keep on reading.